Okay, I am going to show anyone that is interested how I map out my garden and kind of figure out what I need to do. So I have a binder, three ring binder, and I have just um, page protectors. And I used graph paper this year, and I just in red made the outline of the bed that I'm working with. So this is my backyard, the west side. Um, and then I used pencil, and I went in and plotted out ideally where I'd like everything to go. Now, I'm going to change my mind, I don't even know how many times, um, about certain parts of this. But the main crop in the bed won't change. So this is going to be up here my um, Roma type tomatoes, any paste tomatoes. They're going to go on a trellis up on the top. And the lower one is going to be all these X's are peppers. And the kinds are right here. This is how that's going to go. I'm going to do carrots and nasturtiums. Um, now, those varieties may change. Um, I don't know how my germination is going to work out. I'm having a little bit of trouble with pepper germination. Um, so they might be a different variety. But sweet peppers and paste tomatoes will be back here. So what I do is I go through, figure it all out, even like my little interplanted crops. So I don't know if you can see oh, right here. Interplant basil. I'm going to put basil plants in between every tomato set. And then over here, I'm going to put white sunflowers that I got last year on the end up against the chicken coop. I put it all in. And now that I've got most of my seeds started, I'm going to go through and look at each page. So still to seed, I want to do marigolds in the front here. I can direct seed those, but I've got them on my list. These nasturtiums, the sunflowers, and then um, I've got some squash. I'm going to do three center cut squash or tromboncino right here to go over the coop again this year. These are things I still need to seed. So I'm just going to put a post-it note on this. Hey, you still need to seed these ones. As I'm going through and starting new seeds, I'm going to check and see, you know, which ones to go. These are all um, April 1st, April 1st, April 1st. Marigolds, I could start any time, but I don't even need to. So if I'm out of space, marigolds, I can just direct sow in the ground. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, and then I've got a note in here, back up your sweet peppers. Because my sweet pepper germination is a little bit less than I'd like. I'm going to keep an eye on these and I might make some backup plants um, if I have room. So I just put my notes on there. So same thing here. This is the back. So now this is the bed we were just looking at. There's my chicken coop all along the back. I'm moving a bench into this. This is, used to be a sandbox for the kids. They don't use it anymore. So this is going to be my little greenhouse corner. I'm going to put some pots back in here. I'm going to put some flagstone right in front of it because the chicken's door is right here and it kind of um, is rough looking because the chickens come out and forage and stuff. So I'm just going to put flagstone there with some low growing things. The back wall, sweet dumpling, honey nut, delicata, squash, and sugar pie pumpkins. Um, so I did the same thing here. All those squash I still need to seed April 1st. And then I put a note down here, I might need to seed more marjoram and yarrow because right now I've only got a, one of these and two of these. And if I'm going to use them in this herb spiral, I might need a couple more plants. So there's my notes. And on the other side, this is the chicken coop over here. This is the back wall. So this is going to be the east side of my property in the backyard. And these are my slicers. They're going to go up 14 slicer tomatoes. And I'm going to string trellis those. Again, there's the kind. If they work, great. If they don't, these are my big slicer tomatoes will go. Um, I've already got my zinnias started, white plum flowers, the sugar pie, sugar pie pumpkin this year. I'm going to grow it on this back wall and I'm going to train it because right here are our sheds. I'm going to grow over the top of our sheds. Well, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so I've got a note here. I got asters in this bottom corner. Asters bloom in the fall so they can start a little bit later. Um, but I need to get my asters and my sunflower seeds started relatively soon. Okay, here is that tomato bud. So we're coming around the corner. I got this little tiny uh, area. It's got trellising on it. So I'm growing my melons here, Kajari melon and the Savor melon. Um, I've never grown this one. This one I grew in a bad spot last year, so I'm going to give it a try again. I'm only going to grow maybe two plants of each, and then I'm going to interplant with this Granny Cantrell beans. Put some sunflowers there, some herbs. Um, so I got here, start melon seeds. April 1st. This does not have much in it. It's the salad garden. It's right outside my back door. Um, it's about four by ten, maybe. Um, 
And all I've got is start nasturtiums April 1st because everything else is all my spring stuff. My spring things are going to go in there. That's the first place I'm going to plant. So they're already established and ready to go. I'm just waiting for a break on the weather. All right, so here's how we got to do it. So this is where I'm at. This is my driveway. And um, this is the my back door back over here heading down toward the road. And I have got um, an old ladder trellis right here against the house. And then I've got a stone bed. And right here I've got a big long 12 foot bed. And then another stone one. And on the end right here I've got a wooden tiered. So lower, medium, highest thing to end it out. So again, I went through, marked out things that don't change in red. <laughs> Except right there. Look at it messed up. Oh. I get carried away sometimes. So that's what's going on there. And then I'm just going to put a sticky note here and I'm going to go through and look. So on the ladder trellis, I don't know what I'm putting there. I am putting these cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes here. Those are already started. They haven't germinated, so I'll keep an eye on them. Same thing here. Right here I'm going to do habanadas and tequila sunrise peppers with some calendula. All started. Good to go. In this middle, I am going to grow nasturtiums with all my summer squash. Now, none of these are started. So down here, I'm going to put a note, squash and nasturtium start, uh, I'm going to start those April 1st, okay? So I know, come in and do those. Over here, same thing, all started, both those peppers are started. These are spring things that I already have going, except for the sunflowers. So I've got Brussels. That's my cauliflower, my broccoli, kale, cosmos, marigolds in the front on the ground, cabbages and beets. Everything here started except sunflowers and marigolds. So I'm going to put sunflowers April 1st too. And then I'm going to go marigolds, question mark. And I'll keep an eye out. And if I have room, I'll do marigolds. Okay, next one. This is my front porch. So this is my front porch. There's my steps going down the sidewalk to the front. Um, back over here is where we just came from. I got bushes on this side. I'm going to do kale. I've got some decorative kale over here because this is shady once the trees all leave out um, into the summertime. I've got irises and I'm going to put a little bit of zinnia here and I'm going to see if it flowers well. It is got some dappled sunlight. I don't know how well it'll work, but I might put some smaller ones there. Um, I've got thyme growing here in my sidewalks cracks. I'm going to put some calendula up here. These are two potters at the front. I've got geranium, calendula, and kale all done already. Good to go. I've got two planters up on my porch. They're going to have geranium ready to go. Zinnia ready to go. Irises are perennial. They're already there. And then here's my big bush line, and I'm doing cabbages and calendula across the front. Already going. Back here is the silver slicers. Um, those are cucumbers that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a scarlet runner beans interplanted. And I'm going to do three pea towers. So I'm going to make myself a little sticky note. Cucumber starts. And I'm going to start those anytime. They take a little bit longer than squash. And I can get them out a little bit earlier than the squash. Because they're up next to the house and they're protected by these bushes. They can go out a little early. So I'm going to start those when I have time. Scarlet runners I will direct sow. So I don't need to worry about those. These peas, I will direct so, but I will put a note on here to find PTBs. Um, because I want those to be very tall. Last year, because once these peas are done, I'm going to switch them over to beans for the summer. And my beans got really tall and they outgrew the trellises I have. So I need to find some like 10 foot ones to make uh, pea trellises. And then up in the front corner, this is up by my sidewalk. And I'm just marking out what I got right here. I've got honeysuckle and irises and peonies already there. I am going to sow some short zinnias, which I haven't done yet, actually. So, see, this is why I do this. Sow dwarf zinnias. So I need to get those going. All right, so then we're going to go around the side of the house this way. Um, if you notice over here, this is the side of my porch. I grow up my porch. I got five slicer tomatoes, which I already got. I got sunflowers, which I would need to sow. This hibiscus and bee balm are perennial. They're already there. 
So I'm going to add sunflower up here. Sunflowers and cukes, I can start whenever I want. Um, and then, so there's those tomatoes we just looked at. There's the bee balm. And I've got the side of the house here. This is a little bit open. I get to be a little creative back here because um, it's kind of like my perennial herb garden. I'm trying to put things in it that are going to be perennial and just fill in every year any holes with annuals. So I have got some lilies in here, some irises and some phlox, thyme, oregano, sage, lavender. I have lemon balm here, but I'm going to rip it out. That's why I got it in parentheses. It is a bully. It um, is taking over my bed. It's got to go. Black eyed Susans and daisies. And I've got some columbine over here. What I'm going to do, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all these things in. So I'm going to pull these out and I'll have space along the house. I'll have space in front for something short. I've got some hollyhocks I'm going to put in the back, larkspur. I need to add chive in here somewhere and then fill in with zinnia and snapdragons. And I need to get a marjoram going. That's a perennial in my area. So if I can get that going somewhere in here, probably somewhere down lower. This is up high. It drops down low. Here's my bushes. I've got wild geranium underneath here um, and crocuses and then some lupin over here. And then on the end, I have a bucket, delphinium and calendula. So everything here is going and this is kind of my spot to be a little more creative. Oh, I've got coreopsis over here in the corner too. And I'm putting creeping time on my sidewalk crack this year. Okay. Moving on past, so that way over here, this is my AC, it's my air conditioning unit. The bushes pick back up again. I got a flagpole right here, and this is where I put a bunch of other um, herbs. I got oregano, thyme, calendula. I'm gonna put, probably put another um, marjoram over here. The zinnias are already sown, so I need to do sunflowers. So I'm gonna add a sticky note in the middle of my bushes. Shoop. Sunflower seed. Now I'm putting April 1st on these. Sunflowers, people have very strong opinions on how to sow sunflowers. Sunflowers you can direct sow. Um, people will tell you they don't like to be transplanted. I have started sunflowers in the house and planted them out without too much problem. You got to be a little careful. But what happens when I put sunflower seeds out is that the squirrels and them eat them all because it's early spring and they're looking for food and I don't get great germination. So things where um, I have these white sunflower seeds that I got or um, I've got some lemon queen, anything that I buy that's a little bit um, more pricey or I want to make sure that they, they make it, I will direct sow those. You can start anytime. Um, but probably after April 1st is probably best. Now, if I save seed from sunflowers and I'm just throwing them willy-nilly and making like a row and just, you know, kind of heavy sowing them, those I'll just put the seed out. But if I got a certain variety that I want to make sure it makes it, those I'm going to start inside. Okay, so AC, bushes, sunflower I'm going to seed for this one. I've got snapdragons, an eggplant in this container. I've got a container with a hibiscus out in it, and I've got a container with its tithonia. That's Mexican sunflower. Uh, my first batch of seeds didn't take. I just put new ones in. It might not work. If it doesn't work, I will have to put something else in there. This is a really tall container. Something like hollyhock might look nice in there. So that's kind of, you know, we'll see. More silver slicers and dill. I already have dill going. I need to do these silver slicers. Silver slicer. Um, and that's next to my house. This is gonna be my sidewalk on the back side. So here we go, last area I've got. This is um, an in-ground garden. It is 10 by about 30. Um, and it's right next to my sidewalk. Here's my big tall fence on, on the side street. This whole side fence I'm gonna do with um, the Benary Giant Zinnia this year instead of sunflower. This is normally where I put my sunflowers. They always fall over. They require a lot of work to keep upright. They look amazing, but I'm gonna try the Benary Giants and then just do a big, huge chunk of sunflower on the end of our property and try that this year and see if I like it. Um, now there's a lot of stuff in here. My sticky note might get kind of crazy, but pretty much I'm gonna put Tatsoy and Kalinja in all the corners. So I'm gonna mark on my little note to start Tatsoy because I don't have that started yet. Start. 
Tatsoi. Tatsoi is a, like a mustard green kind of in that same family. It gets really big and pretty. I let it flower. It's an early flower for um, spring pollinators and um, it grows fast. So I'm just going to start those. It's cold hardy. I can put it out as soon as the weather breaks a little bit here. Um, the clinja I already got. So I got that in all four corners. Back row be peas. I'll direct seed those. Carrots, I'll direct seed. And then here I have got a whole bunch of pepper plants. Again, like I mentioned already, I'm a little worried about my pepper germination. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, but I'm going to put as many as I can in one row without them getting crowded. And I think I'm being a little overly optimistic here. What I could do too is um, space them one here, one up, one back, one up. But I like to plant my pepper plants pretty close together. Um, there's like this old wives thing saying that pepper plants like to hold hands. They like their leaf from this plant to touch the leaf of this plant. They kind of grow a little bit better than being kind of out on their own. I have found that to be true, but that is just um, anecdotal. I have no proof or scientific reason for that whatsoever. But I found it to be true, so I always do it. I always kind of plant them in little groups of two. Um, I'm gonna interplant those with basil and nasturtium back in there. Then I'm gonna do some double rows of yellow beans. I'm gonna do like, I kinda of like to do something in the middle to break it up. So I'm gonna just gonna do a couple chard here. Those look really pretty. I've got rainbow chard and bright pink chard. And the coolest thing about these chard is they act as a trap plant. Every earwig in this garden is going to go eat this chard. I'm not going to get to eat any of this chard. If I want chard, I'm going to have to put it in a container somewhere. Every bug earwig is going to come eat off of here, which means they won't eat the rest of my stuff. Um, so it worked really, really good last year. I'm going to do it again this year. I'll probably plant some flowers in and around it and make this look like a little vignette in the middle. Um, I'm going to put all of my watermelon in a big group right here. Um, and they will need more room. But what I did is in front of them, I put rows of kohlrabi and beets and cabbage. All those things will be gone by the time they need to move around because they will be harvested. So as the season progresses, these vines will have all this room in here to go. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, on either side of these rows, I'm gonna put some zinnia and salvia already started. Kohlrabi and the beets already started. Watermelon not started. So on my note, watermelon. This is kind of hard to do. Hang on. We'll get to it. Okay. Um, I'm going to do two bean blocks over here. This one's dragon tongue bush bean, and I don't know which one I want to do here yet, so it's got a question mark. Down this row, I'm going to do a row of um, a row of squash. And if you look, dark star is a zucchini, eight balls is a zucchini. Cocosel and Slick Pick are summer squash, zucchini types. And in the middle, I put this candy roaster. This is a winter squash. And the same thing is over here. I'm putting this winter squash in the middle. So as these summer squash die out, the candy roaster will have room to vine out a little bit here. It's my first year with this. I hope I'm not making a mistake. We'll find out. Um, and then I'm going to do pedigree and Minnesota midget melons on either side here. Same thing. We're going to lose all these, and I'm going to have room for those to spread out 30 feet back and forth. And then these dark cukes are a bush cuke. I'm going to put a little tiny trellis in there and put them all the way across with my onions in front. Those also will harvest out. Cucumbers for me usually last. I've never done this variety, so I don't know, but I've never had a bush cuke go really far past, you know, mid-July, end of July. So by August, those will be gone. Um, my onions, same kind of thing about the first week of August. I think last year's when I yanked those out. Um, so, and then I'm going to spaghetti squash over here. So let me get my sticky note and make it stick so I can actually write. So i got to start the tatsoi. I have to start my squash and my melons. And I'm not going to start those until April 1st, for sure, because they'll get huge in my house. Um, and I have to start my dar cukes anytime. Okay. Oh, and that's the end. Look, these are my satellite gardens. Hi, Emily, Ben, and Mom. I am planning on putting this stuff in your yard. 
<laughs> and this is my black grow bag collection. Um, I have a ton of grow bags. None of the stuff I just showed you includes grow bags. So I got a whole bunch of stuff where I might put a bag full of this and put them around the yard for pollinators. We have concluded our garden tour. All right, so all I'll do then is I'll just keep referencing this when I go down and check out my seeds and keep an eye on what I need still and how things are going. And then um, if I do go downstairs and I'm like, hey, these sweet peppers are not germinating, I can put a note in here and be like, add 12 banana peppers or whatever. Um, and then everything I need won't be missed. Like I said, I'm going to change this a bajillion times. But this is how I plan like early spring right now so that I have room for everything.